Uh, welcome back to online lecture five on unit number six, advanced air conditioning systems. Uh, this lecture we will discuss the fifth advanced air conditioning system that is radiant cooling. Uh, these are the contents of today's lecture. Uh, mainly we will discuss working principle of radiant cooling system, the different classes of radiant cooling system, design procedure, installation practices, and piping layout used. Radiant heating and cooling is a category of HVAC technologies that exchange heat by both convection and radiation with environments that are designed to heat or cool. Uh, radiant systems uh, that use water to cool the radiant surfaces are called as hydronic systems. Uh, unlike all air, air conditioning systems that circulate cooled air only, hydronic radiant systems circulate cool water in pipes through specially mounted panels uh, or a building's floor or ceiling to provide comfortable temperatures. Radiant cooling is often a part of hybrid system. Uh, that includes a conditioning of ventilation air to address the internal latent loads, uh, especially humidity part from occupants and infiltration, plus sensible and latent loads associated with the outside ventilation load. So radiant system uh, alone uh, can only absorb sensible heat in order to uh, uh, absorb the latent heat part uh, some ventilation air, uh, ventilation air is required. So it is always uh, used in hybrid system. Uh, an actively controlled surface is considered as radiant system if at least 50% of the design heat transfer is by thermal radiation. Uh, then and then that system is called as a radiant system. This is as per the ASHRAE standards 2004. Uh, if it is less than, if you are building walls or uh, the sur sur control surfaces uh, absorb heat due to radiation for at least 50%, then and then the system is regarded as a radiant system. There are two categories of radiant uh, systems, uh, the radiant heating system and radiant cooling system. Uh, in case of radiant heating system, uh, the heat is transferred only because of radiation. Uh, because uh, the control surface, which is generally a hot surface, and it is associated with the hot air. So the hot air will not travel down. So there is no natural convection currents developed in case of heating system. But in case of cooling system, uh, when the cold air comes in contact with this control surface provided with the pipings, cold pipings, so its density uh, increases and it falls down and only the hot air it goes up so it creates a natural convection currents so almost 30 to 40 percent heat is transferred due to convection and 60 to 70 percent heat is transferred due to radiation this is happening in cooling system and the radiant system that uses water to cool the radiant surfaces so whatever the pipes are mounted on the ceiling and through these pipes, if the water is circulated, then such system is called as a hydronic system. So the major difference between heating and cooling. So in case of radiant heating system, the heat is transferred only because of radiation. And in case of radiant cooling system, the heat is transferred due to convection as well as radiation. Uh, and the main disadvantage of this system, it, it can only carry, uh, absorb the sensibility as well. Uh, so uh, as per the radiant system sizing, it mainly determined based on the building load. So building load is mainly categorized into two, sensible loads and latent loads. Uh, as far as sensible load is concerned, the net sensible load is the total sensible load minus sensible load removed by DOAS, that is uh, direct outside air system. Uh, so this uh, direct outside air system is mainly introduced, that is a ventilation system. So out of this sensible load, the radiant system, 70% uh, sensible load it carries, uh, that, and 70% sensible load of, 30% uh, sensible load of DOAS, that is direct outside air system. Uh, and uh, the latent load, it mainly uh, is taken care by this. 
the system. Uh, that is direct outside air system. This is a typical uh, layout of a radiant cooling system uh, where uh, this is a refrigeration system and which generates the chill water and the chill water is being circulating through the various pipings uh, fitted in the ceiling of uh, any building. Uh, this particular portion is also called a chilled beam and uh, because this is called as a control surface and this control surface absorbs uh, the sensible heat from different heat sources. So this is a typical circuit but uh, uh, again uh, only radiant cooling is not sufficient because whatever the heat latent is dissipated by the various sources to remove that latent heat uh, generally ventilation air is required. So this radiant cooling system is always associated with this ventilation system. Uh, there are different classification based on the structure of uh, radiant cooling system. Uh, uh, a structured integrated system uh, uh, that is uh, generally fitted uh, integral with the slab and wall then panel cooling systems and embedded surface system. In structure integrated, also better coupling with the thermal mass of the building structure happens, and it's a comparatively a low cost per unit area of the active surface. As far as the panel is concerned, uh, proper zoning and installation flexibility is there. Uh, better responsiveness and control is there also in panel cooling. Uh, these are the advantages. So there are three systems. So our, uh, structure uh, integrated system. These are some. Uh, pictures of the structure, such kind of structure, uh, and they are also provided with the piping material, and it is uh, installed during the construction itself. So, during the construction of the building, uh, this particular method is applicable. So, during the construction, this is a typical cross section of the structure integrated system. The flooring is there, then floor construction, then inside the structure, these pipings are embedded. Uh, this heating and cooling tubing is there and so uh, this is the integral part so that's why it is called the integrated system so this is another uh, cut section of this integrated system so concrete uh, then the bottom metal panel where the heat is transferred down so some insulation is there so this is top surface overflow so uh, generally this is a section which is fitted on the ceiling and this portion, it is a conductive portion so that uh, the heat, the bottom portion becomes hot or cool depending upon the water circulating. Uh, and this is the second one that is a panel cooling system, the separate panel. So this system can be used in existing building as well. So it's such kind of panels uh, which are embedded with, uh, fitted with this piping. Uh, so this particular structure can be easily mounted on the uh, ceiling or floor. So like that, the floor will be. Uh, so after construction of building, so existing building also, uh, this particular technique is applicable. So this particular this portion is provided with the air gap followed by insulation, and then heating a, or cooling tubes uh, followed by a metal panel like this. So this is another technique uh, which is more flexible because even for existing building, we can use this particular technique. Uh, there are different configurations and uh, different advances are there in uh, panel designing. So to enhance the rate of heat transfer or to enhance the eff effectiveness of these surfaces. So these are some glimpses of these panels. Uh, then the third classification is embedded surface. Here the uh, original structure, the uh, other uh, um, surface is embedded and this portion is mainly consists of the insulation part. So this is suppose insulation part uh, followed by uh, heating and radiant cooling and followed by the plaster like this. So this is embedded surface. So this particular uh, technique can be uh, used for existing building as well. So except the first one, the other two techniques can be implementable. Uh, in the existing building. As far as the design procedure is concerned, uh, the radiant cooling system, first the cooling capacity is estimated. Uh, for uh, Then for each zone, uh, calculate the total tubing length required to meet that cooling capacity. And based on tubing requirement, uh, they estimate the number of loops 
uh, then arrangement of loops and followed by based on the number of loops uh, determine the number of manifolds required so this is actually a design procedure of uh, installing uh, the radiant system uh, these are some uh, loop layouts so recommended loop layouts so which gives the uniform temperature everywhere uh, so inlet at one side and outlet at other side so such kind of configurations uh, create a hotter and uh, colder region so which is not uh, recommended so whatever the layout is there that loop uh, it should provide the uniform temperature distribution like this so this is a recommended loop or we can uh, lay uh, we can use this configuration as well so both configurations provide a uniform distribution of the temperature so these are some glimpses of uh, the different layouts to be used in practice uh, like on the side wall also uh, the radiant piping is installed this is on the ceiling side wall flooring so different piping layout we can see so as part of the installation uh, procedure is concerned first the insula insulation is installed uh, then laying pipe layouts then pressure testing is important because a leak is not allowable there because in case of leak, the surfaces becomes wet and there is a fungus and growth dev uh, bacteria development occurs. So leak testing is essential part of the piping layout. Then connecting radiant cooling pipes to the chiller and the commissioning of the system. So these are the important steps of the insulation uh, installation of the radiant cooling system. Uh, this is a typical uh, radiant slab cooling or uh, buildings in India. One is it, uh, in Hyderabad, Infosys, uh, uh, software development. So the entire building is a radiant cooling building. And the second one is available in Pune, that is uh, Indian Institute of Trop uh, Tropical Metrology. Uh, so that's it. Uh, at the end of this particular topic, you should be able to describe the important features of radiant cooling and heating. Main important features that radiant heating system, uh, the heat is absorbed only because of radiation. Cooling system, it is due to convection and radiation. And radiant uh, cooling or heating system, it only uh, absorbs sensible heat. So these radiant cooling and heating systems are always associated with some ventilation system. Uh, to take care of the latent heat flow. Uh, you should be able to illustrate different classes of radiant systems. There are three classes that uh, integrated structure, then embedded structure and panel cooling. So all these classes, their important features you should be able to describe or illustrate. Then you should be able to describe the design of a radiant system as well as the piping layout of radiant system. Uh, you should be able to design the piping layout so that what should be the recommended loop, uh, which gives the uniform temperature distribution. And finally, the installation practices of, uh, you should be able to describe this installation practices as well. Uh, so with this, we have discussed all five uh, advanced air conditioning systems. Uh, the importance of all five uh, advanced air conditioning systems. So these are the energy conservation techniques uh, and they are mainly associated with uh, the conventional system uh, to improve the efficiency of the conventional system. So for example, a desiccant wheel, if we use with conventional system, it take care of latent load. Evaporative cooling, it is a costly, it is alternative solution for providing uh, cooling effect. Uh, and then uh, thermal storage, it mainly reduces uh, the initial size of the system as well as the, it reduces the uh, running cost as well. Uh, and then comes a clean room air conditioning system is a special purpose system. So that is especially uh, designed for a certain production processes or certain uh, scientific research processes. And finally, radiant cooling system, which mainly take care of the sensible load, and but it is generally associated with again a ventilation system. So all of these five systems are uh, uh, called as advanced air conditioning systems, but because nowadays these systems are 
used in combination with the conventional systems to improve the efficiency. Uh, next lecture, we will uh, study the last part of unit number six, that is heat pump systems. So heat pump systems is, is also a, a, a energy efficient system as far as the heating is concerned. Uh, because uh, in heating, there are other options like uh, 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 heaters or using a solar heat, but heat pump is the most economical options for heating applications. Thank you very much.